Hello, I'm Susan Axelrod, the Director of Communications for the Episcopal Diocese of Maine. And today I'm talking with Nick Penfield, who's the President of the Trustees for Diocesan Funds. Do I have that title right? You do. Oh, good. We have some questions for Nick because there have been questions about investments, specifically um, about investing in socially responsible entities. And so Nick is going to clarify some of the things that the trustees are doing to address those issues, as well as um, some other important points. So last year, um, the diocese passed Resolution 1, which established a commission to study the investment of diocesan funds. And so why do you think that Resolution 1 is a good thing? Well, to the extent that it provides more transparency for uh, the trust with the trustees and, and our client churches throughout the diocese, I think it's a great thing. Um, as you said, the, the, uh, the resolution passed at the fall convention calls for a commission to be formed. Uh, the commission has been formed. It consists of lay leaders and clergy leaders throughout the diocese. And thus far, we've enjoyed working with, with the commission and look forward to uh, any recommendations that they may come up with. Right. The 2023 Trustees Report describes alternative investments following the directive of the wider church. What percentage of the diocesan funds are invested in these alternative investments? So today it's less than 1% of the total portfolio. Um, the, the reason for that it is small is that our alternative investment consists of a loan. So as the loan balance gets paid down, it becomes a smaller percentage of the portfolio especially as our fixed income and equity investments uh, get, get larger. So we are looking at uh, other sources of alternative investments. We're having ongoing dialogues about that, and we suspect that there'll be more to come on that. Interesting. It will be interesting to see what some of that discussion is at the um, general convention yes. this yes. year. Um, how did the trustees engage in any impact or community investment? And if so, what is the policy? So uh, we uh, do engage in impact investing basically through our ESG portfolio. Um, we also uh, have a relationship with the Genesis Fund. Uh, the Genesis Fund, um, we've had a relationship, the diocese had a relationship with the Genesis Fund since 1992 when the Genesis Fund began. And our relationship with them is such, it's the loan that I mentioned before, um, and the loan benefits uh, low uh, and middle income housing in Maine and New Hampshire. Um, so, again, we're looking at that having ongoing discussions about expanding the relationship. That's really interesting. I attended a church pension group investment discussion a few weeks ago, a month ago, and um, Trinity Wall Street was talking about you know, their investments in low income housing because, of course, they have great experience in investing in real estate. Yes. So now they're trying to use that. Yes. So of course, in Maine, at every bit as much as in New York, affordable housing is a really big issue. More so today than ever. Yes, absolutely. Um, so to whom do you look as the trustees for inspiration and ideas about investments? So the trustees employ three investment managers, um, and we uh, essentially pay them, amongst other things, to provide us with, with information um, with respect to new investments and new investment ideas. Um, we have um, a risk appetite. Um, in our investment policy that d does not include certain types of investments. Uh, we're relatively conservative to the extent that we don't include cryptocurrency, uh, th th those kinds of investments. Um, I will also say that one of the uh, great pleasures of my job is meeting with our clients, client churches, and uh, talking to them about our investment philosophy and what we do. So um, our core, um, we are not stock pickers, the trustees are not. Um, we rely on the advice of our investment managers, but we also listen to our clients as well. So what is the difference between impact of community investments and alternative investments? There isn't any uh, specific difference uh, to the extent that, uh, you know, an alternative investment in our view is just not uh, an equity or a fixed income investment. Um, so it, it can, uh, so long as it fits within our risk profile and our risk appetite, it, it can be a variety of different things. And for us today, it is along with the Genesis Fund. Excellent, thank you. So what do you say to those folks who want all of the diocese portfolio to be in ESG investments? And first of all, um, for those of us uh, who might, I mean, I still struggle a little bit with what, I 
every time I hear a ESG, I have to say, what does that mean again? Could you define that, please, and then answer that other question? Sure, sure. It's a great question. Um, I, I, too, get confused with the notion of ESG, which technically stands for environmental, social, and governance. Um, some people will think of it as being restrictive in your investing. Um, you shouldn't invest in X, Y, and Z types of companies that may have a negative impact on the environment or, uh, you know, otherwise. Um, so, uh, to answer your question with respect to, you know, what it is, I guess, um, the, the, our investment managers use ESG scoring um, to uh, provide a lens through which we can understand risk. And uh, ESG does mean a lot of different things. Uh, it can mean things such as how as diverse is your board of directors, um, what, what is your climate impact in terms of the way you run your business, all those sorts of things go into ESG. For the trustees, I think it's important to, to phrase your question about why we don't just go 100% into ESG by starting from the point where we understand that we are fiduciaries, first and foremost, each trustee is a fiduciary, so we have a legal and ethical obligation to um, deliver maximum returns for our clients within the framework of our investment philosophy. So uh, that's not to say that we don't use ESG, uh, whether it be scoring or investments, because we do. All three of our investment managers use ESG scoring, um, and I think they're a, a, a valuable tool. Um, but I think it would also be a mistake to say, let's just invest in one way. And the reason for that is, is it, it neglects diversity of, of investments. Meaning that if you were to say, I, I'm going to just invest in commodities or I'm just going to invest in fixed income investments, you're going to be uh, putting yourself at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have an uh, investment philosophy that um, mitigates that risk. It doesn't mean, again, that ESG isn't important to us. As a matter of fact, last month, the ESG portfolio returned better than all of the other uh, portfolios that we manage, and it also beat the S&P 500. Okay. So, it, so ESG can be an important component to our, to our investing. That's fascinating. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. Regarding the vulnerability of small parishes that would have limited tolerance for underperforming investments, do the trustees follow a, a do no harm standard or are there risk, degrees of risk that they deem accept, acceptable for these small parishes? Yeah, uh, so we, we do invest for all our client churches the same way, generally speaking, and uh, there are two components to our investment. Um, uh, policy that I think are applicable to this question. So one is, you know, we want we want to generate a steady stream of income to our clients, and we also want to preserve the purchasing power of the endowment so that it lasts in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So in order to meet those two prongs, uh, we have a diverse portfolio, and the 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 way that we try to mitigate that risk is to have first three different investment managers. Uh, we have one that's local here in Portland. We have one that is a mid-sized firm in Boston. We have another one that's an international firm. They all three of them have different investment styles uh, and, 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 and different thesis for why they own stocks and bonds. So uh, by again by having um, you know a diverse uh, approach, I think that mitigates a lot of the geopolitical risk that goes on today. Um, and, you know, we have ongoing debates within the trustees about the size of our equity portfolio versus fixed income. That's, you know, very important to us in terms of make, having striking the right balance. Um, and if, if we go through our, our jobs by trying to strike the right balance, that should mitigate a lot of the geopolitical risk that exists today. You mentioned the policy, Nick, that, or the policies that the trustees have of not investing in certain entities. And yeah. can you share with me what those are? Sure, so our investment policy uh, mandates that we don't uh, invest in any companies that manufacture tobacco. Um, we also exclude the top five defense contractors uh, from our investment policy, in, in our investment policy. That's good to know, thank you. Yeah. Um, is there something in particular that you feel that um, members of the diocese may not know about the trustees' work that you particularly want them to know? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, I, I would say that, uh, first, it is an incredibly talented group of people. 
Uh, these are people that have succeeded in their professional life. Um, they succeed in their, in their, for some, in their retirement. Um, we get along great. Uh, we have great discussions about the things that matter. We have a great leader in the bishop. Um, and I would say that uh, we, uh, I, I would say to our client churches, we love meeting with you. And uh, we invite you to meet with us, whether it's the treasurer, or the vestry, wardens, uh, you know, as I said before, I enjoy that part of my job very much. Uh, I find it fulfilling, and uh, we don't have anything to hide, so uh, we welcome you know discussions with our clients on any topic. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Susan. Time. This has been really interesting and enjoyable. Thank you. And um, thank you for watching and listening. <laughs>